Okay, welcome back to the second hour. All right, we were looking at another element of uh, a good marriage, which is being able to resolve conflicts, right? So we did uh, uh, the initial part of it where we understood about conflicts, why do conflicts happen, how are certain unhealthy ways of dealing with conflicts, and then we looked at how we should engage um, maturely in a conflict. Now we're going to look at seven steps of how do we uh, once we are in that place of engaging we know we've pressed the pause button how do we go and uh, deal with the conflict so like i said the first three points are it's done individually right with god and the other the other four following four is done with uh, with the, your spouse or anyone else who you are having a concern with. So you can, like I said, you can use this um, with anyone you're having a conflict with. Okay. So the first one is to pray and prepare your heart. So what happens in a conflict? We said when we get angry, we can feel bitter, upset, resentful. And so when we are, when we are experiencing those kind of emotions, our, our are hearts right with God? Are we right with God when we are having you're so angry towards your spouse? You have you have death threats that you're speaking in your head. Are we right with God? You say, next time let him come here, I will show him. You're probably not saying it out, but it's all in your head. Are we right with God? No. Right? No. Yeah. Okay. So if when we aren't right with God, what will happen? This bitterness will keep festering, right? And it will keep festering, festering till it becomes rotten. And then it will start to smell. Isn't it? Right? So we need to come to a place of being right with God. So what does the Bible say in Matthew chapter 12, verse 34? The mouth speaks what the heart is full of. Remember I told you last time? If there's coffee in this and you shake this, what will come out? Perfume will come out or coffee only will come out? Coffee will come out, right? So whatever is inside your heart, when you're really shaken, only that will come out. Nothing good will come out, right? If you are angry inside and you are shaken and you are not physically shaken, but if you're made, if you, if you are upset, only angry words will come out, okay? Sweet words is not going to come out. Or in Matthew chapter 15, 19 to 20, can somebody read that? Matthew 15, 19 to 20. Do you know where we are in seven steps to resolving conflict? The first one, pray, pray and prepare your heart. Matthew 15. Yes, please read. Please read. For from your heart comes the evil ideas which lead you to kill, commit adultery and do other immoral things to rob, lie, and slander others. These are the things that make you unclean. But to Thank eat without washing your hands, as they say you should, this doesn't make you unclean. Okay. So, from where does all these evil things come? Where does it say? What does it say in the verse? From, from the, heart. the heart. From the heart are where evil things come. Right? So, then when we are in a place of conflict and when there is resent, resentment, anger, bitterness, it's from that that the evil ideas to kill, to commit adultery and do immoral things, rob, lie, slander, shout, abuse, all of that comes from the heart. And so what do we need to do? We need to go before God in prayer. Coming to God in prayer and tell him what you feel. Will God feel sad that you feel like that? He wants you to share with him, be open with him. You read in the Psalms that whenever David or whoever the Psalmist was is talking, is always sharing about what he is desperate about. Right? He's even saying, Have you forsaken me? You know, am I going to going to be like this. I'm, I'm like, like someone who's in the pit. So you see that the psalmist has very openly shared about what he's experiencing in his heart. So go to God 
in prayer and confess whatever is in your heart. I feel so angry with this person. I feel I don't want to talk to them ever. I feel I don't want to say it's okay to be honest and open with God about what you're feeling. Okay, God's not going to be shocked. He knows even before you confess it, right? But then it is you're confessing it not not just for God, you're confessing it to yourself. You're actually coming and breaking down your pride in front of God and saying, God, you know, this is how ugly I am inside. I feel like this. Okay, and what do you do? Ask for cleansing. Ask the Lord to cleanse you, to give you a clean heart, to, to be able to um, uh, experience healing of all those emotions that are coming. So either whatever uh, hurt that you're feeling, asking for God to heal that part of you. All right? Do you think God can do it? Absolutely. Right? If you read Psalm 139, 23 to 24, can someone read that? Examine me, O God, and know my mind. Test me and discover my thoughts. Find out if there is any evil in me and guide me in the everlasting way. What a beautiful prayer. Find out if there is any evil in me and guide me in the everlasting way. So you're asking the Lord to, to look within to help to see if there is something that's evil that you are harboring inside and lead you to the way that is everlasting. Okay? So, and that's a desire. If you look at the way <clears throat> uh, David wrote, he said, Create in me a clean heart, O God. Right? Right after the time of his sin with Bathsheba, he comes in and says, And put a new heart within me. Right? So, going to God and praying and asking God to heal the hurt and heal the pain. All right. The second one is to receive the, the empowering of God to help love and forgive the other person. Okay. Uh, maybe for smaller things, well, I mean, you know, someone called you a name or someone said something to tease you, may not be too difficult to forgive, but really, really huge um, situations or, or, or difficult situations is not easy to forgive, isn't it? Right? And whose help do you need? You need the power of the Holy Spirit to help you forgive. Now, let's look at maybe situations like adultery or, you know, cheating or lying. You know, can be very, very significant pain and hurt that can cause severe damage for, for, for a person. So we see that it's only the power of the Holy Spirit that helps us to uh, love the person, to help us to forgive. It's, it's the power of the Holy Spirit that helps us to, to do that. Uh, Romans chapter 5, verse 5. Can someone read that? <clears throat> this hope does not disappoint us, for God has poured out his love into our hearts by means of the Holy Spirit, who is God's gift to us. Okay, so who's poured out his love? God has poured out his love to us through the Holy Spirit. So when you are actually walking in the love of God, what, what is, what's happening? It actually, you, you are being one with God. When you're walking in, in God's love, you're, you are one with God. And when you're one with God, you have victory. You have victory over those overpowering emotions or even those difficult situations that come. So it is the love of God that helps you to be patient and helps you to be kind. And you read that in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 4 to 8. It talks about what love is. That love is not human love. That love is unconditional agape love, the, the love of God. And when the love of God is poured out into our hearts, we find that we are able to live out that love, which is patient, kind, not jealous, not conceited, not proud, not ill-mannered, not selfish, not irritable. You know, it, it has that entire thing. So you're going to God and acknowledging, saying, Lord, your Holy Spirit is working me. And I, uh, no matter how difficult the situation is, I know that your love is poured out in me and I have that victory. I have the... I have the power to love and to forgive the other person. 
Okay, so that's what you're doing. You're coming to a place of receiving the love of God, right? Uh, think of it like this: when it's raining outside, okay, think of how God's love and power is so available to you. Right? You want to enjoy the rain, but you still decide to sit sweaty and smelly in the room. That's how this is, right? That the that the rain, the love of God is there through the. I'm just giving you an example for you to think about. The rain is there, but you're sweating and you're saying no. I want to be here. But it is a choice that you're making to actually get washed, cleaned in the love of God that you don't have to do anything of. It's just pouring from the sky. Right? So, so being empowered in that uh, through His love helps you to lead a, that time of victory. Okay? So the second one is receiving God's empowering to love and to forgive. The third one is asking God for the wisdom to deal with the situation. Ask, asking God for wisdom and understanding to resolve the situation. Now, when does it take wisdom to deal with a conflict? Yes. Especially when the conflict is a very difficult and a heated situation, it definitely needs the wisdom of God. Who is the one who gives us wisdom? Yeah, Proverbs 2 6, it says, It is the Lord who gives wisdom. From Him come knowledge and understanding. So He's the one who gives you wisdom. So ask in faith, expecting that God will help you to find the right situation. Right? James 1 5 says, you know, If any of you lack wisdom, what should you do? You should pray to God and ask, because He will give to you and He will not. He gives graciously and generously to everyone when they ask. So his wisdom is always available and he will bring forth an idea or a solution to you that will help you deal with that. So what's important is to listen to listen to the power of the Holy Spirit. Listen to the Holy Spirit. Okay. Now, when you are uh, when you're also using the wisdom, uh, when you're when you are being empowered with wisdom, you also have to do another thing, which is look into God's word. There is instruction in God's word for maybe certain conflicts or certain things that you're going through. So even as you're praying and listening, you're also uh, um, looking to the instruction of the word. <clears throat> okay. So let's say an example. Okay. Uh, maybe your spouse um, maybe does not want to talk. Okay, maybe it's after all the pausing and all of that does not want to talk, and the wisdom of God is telling you, you know, go approach your wife and um, maybe come back to a conversation, make peace with them. All right, and then your wife doesn't want to talk, so then you decide, ah, if she doesn't want to talk, why should I talk? Is that the instruction of the word? Mm -hmm. Word, word. Okay, what is instruction given? As best as possible, live in peace with, with others, right? So, what's the instruction? That's the instruction of the word. So, can you say, ah, okay, she doesn't want to talk now, even I'm not going to talk, I'm getting out from here. No, you say, okay, as the word says, live at peace as much as possible. Say, all right, I'll be, you know, I'll wait for a couple more of hours or days or whatever, to have you talk. So your wisdom must come in alignment with the instruction of God's word. It should never be in conflict with one another. Okay? Then what do we also pay attention to? There is something called as the wisdom of the world and the wisdom of God. So let's look at what the wisdom of the world and wisdom of God is. James chapter 3, verses 14 to 18. Can somebody read that? But if you're in your heart, you are jealous, bitter and selfish, don't sin against the truth by boasting of your wisdom. Such wisdom does not come down from heaven. It belongs to the world. It is unspiritual and demonic. Where there is jealousy and selfishness, there is also disorder and every kind of evil. But the wisdom from above is pure. First of all, it is also peaceful, gentle and friendly. 
it is full of compassion and produces a harvest of good deeds it is free from prejudice and hypocrisy and goodness is the harvest that is produced from the seeds the peacemakers plant in peace okay so what is the wisdom of the world what all are the characteristics of the wisdom of the world jealous bitterness and selfishness so that's the heart of the wisdom of the world so let's say you have a you have a conflict with your spouse okay let's say multiple conflicts have happened have happened what will uh, what does the wisdom of the world say what will the world tell you okay you you give it back right so it will say it's okay you don't have to go say sorry you double the issue okay so it's selfishness right it adds to the bitterness it adds to the jealousy yes yeah, so that's the wisdom of the world they will tell you you know don't keep quiet you must retaliate you must um, you know beat him up or beat her up whatever right so it is always it says it's uh, it's out of jealousy bitterness and selfishness what else is does it say it's unspiritual and demonic what does that word demonic mean correct so what will happen it will open doors for more strife right for more and more of the enemy to work when you are actually following the wisdom of the world there are you are opening doors for the for the evil uh, powers of evil to actually work in you to create more conflict right what else does it say um there is jealousy selfishness there is also disorder and every kind of evil so it every kind of evil comes but instead what does it say the wisdom of god is it's pure it's peaceful gentle friendly full of compassion produces a good harvest it's free from prejudice and hypocrisy there's peace you're a peacemaker that's what the wisdom of god says and so whenever we are going to make a decision ask yourself is this the wisdom of the world or is this the wisdom of god is there peace in this is there righteousness in this is it is it friendly so asking the lord to help you to understand the wisdom and to move move in forward okay so you're you're in a place of asking god to help you address the situation one by taking the wisdom of the holy spirit secondly by looking at the instruction of the word following the wisdom of 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 god okay all right are we good okay so now we go into the hard part what is the hard the first three are actually the easy part no because it has nothing to do with you and your spouse it's only with you and god now it comes when you are dealing with the situation with your spouse so the fourth one is to discuss and address the matter so sometimes it's a difficult thing to do but it has to be done and one way of doing it the first way of doing it is actually to being conscious about it so setting a place setting a time to do this so that you can sit together and work at a certain situation so find a place find a time next is to discuss what is the issue you are going to discuss about yes the current issue is the only thing that you do you cannot deal with hundred of issues at one time so discuss and say okay we will solve try and discuss this problem rather than going to all problems so one thing one thing that i make sometimes couples do in counseling sessions is i give them an object like a book or something and i say okay you know when you're dealing with a conflict you have to listen to the other so when i'm talking i hold this book and i say okay once i finish talking only when i hand over the book to somebody the other person can they talk so that you are in a place of actually listening right and dealing with one issue at a time so ensuring that when one is speaking the other person is actually listening we we looked at communication last week right we looked at how we listen 
right? So to being able to do that. So once they finish giving it to the other person to uh, explain. Now, when you listen, what is the goal of listening? We, we read that last time. What is the goal of listening? To understand. The goal of listening is to understand. So when someone is talking, you're actually only listening, not criticizing, not blaming, not attacking, not deflecting. You know what deflecting means? No? Huh? Changing? No. Deflecting actually means you're telling me, you know, you left the light open or on. And I say, yeah, even yesterday you left the fan and the light and the uh, tube light on. That's deflecting. Why? Someone, he's telling me something and I am bringing it back. That's called deflection. Okay? So these are all unhelpful ways of dealing with conflict. So that's what you avoid doing, but staying in an intent to listen. So the, so the purpose of the conversation is to have an honest discussion. All right? Okay? All right. So what are some practical steps to problem solve or reach a solution? There are a couple of things. Let's quickly go through this. First of all, identify what is the issue you want to resolve. What is the specific issue? The first point, what is the specific issue? The specific issue is, I felt hurt when you said the dosa, my mother's dosa is better. Right? That's maybe the issue. As simple as that. Secondly, discuss, decide if this issue is worth discussing. Right, so what what are we hoping to discuss from this? Will something come out of this, or is it just, you know, a, a time to blame or a time to um, make the other person feel shame or guilt? Right, so discuss what if this issue is really worth discussing. Then the third one is decide when you will talk, when you will speak. All right, so picking a good time and. Um, a place is important. Finding out a time and a place. Fourth one is to get focused before talking. So get focused is to, first of all, sit down and understand what are you feeling? What are you thinking? What would you want to bring about in this issue? So that's something that you need to do on your own, to getting focused on what you need. Next is start the discussion with what you think is positively occurring. You know, you always say good things about me. You always say my coffee is good, but I just want... So you start with good things. You start with the positive things that's happened. Or maybe in a larger part of the relationship, you, say, you know, three good things is that you and I go for a walk together. You know, we never um, fall asleep till we resolve a conflict. These are all good things, but I want to bring this issue up, right? So bringing about the positives first. Um, then when discussing the problem, State how you feel. Very important. Like I said, we always talk about the dosa as the situation. But what is the feeling? I'm feeling hurt. I feel sad. I feel upset. I feel angry. I feel uh, lonely. I feel isolated. So coming back to the place of stating what you are feeling. Then to be specific when giving examples. It's important to give examples to always uh, state what you are feeling. You know, you're saying, I feel very, very lonely. And so then maybe your spouse is asking you, okay, could you explain how that you're feeling lonely? And you say, no, no, I don't know. I'm just feeling lonely. That isn't fair, right? You may need to say, I fe feel lonely when you don't come back, um, whatever, at 9 o'clock in the evening, and I'm sitting alone and eating dinner. I feel lonely. So there needs to be certain, probably certain examples or things that you can give so that it helps your spouse really understand what you're clearly saying. Okay? Are we all here? Or are we all in the in conflict resolution? Okay. Eight one. Ask for what you want for yourself, your spouse, and the relationship. So what is how is it that what is it that you want during the conflict resolution? Remember, I told you something sometimes it's to only listen. You want the other person only to listen, not to resolve the conflict. So say, hey, I just want you to listen to my hurt. I don't want you to do anything about it. So making that statement very clear. I just want you to listen. I don't want you to resolve. Then if it is a resolving, you discuss and arrive at a solution where you identify what the problem is, Okay, brainstorm what are some of the options, and looking at 
what options you can do, selecting the best option and deciding how you will carry it on. All right. So maybe it's the TV situation. So then this is what, where you will get back into you know, identifying what was a problem. Yes, we need a TV. Brainstorming. Okay, why do we need this TV? Why do we need that? Why do we need this? And then discussing about it till you can come up to one unified option. Okay, tenth one is to implement what you have agreed upon. And eleventh one is to review your progress and your agreement. So when you discuss things like this, it becomes easier to really find a way of working through a situation. Again, if a discussion is not easy like this, it is important to get the support of a of someone as a third party to help you with that. All right? Clear? Okay. The fifth one is to resolve the matter in peace. So what are we called to be? We are called to be peacemakers. It says, blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the sons of God. So we are called to be a peacemaker as well as be a peacemaker as well as to stay in peace, right? So uh, in your relationships, um, it's important to um, be at peace because what happens if you're not in peace? It will affect your relationship with God, isn't it? Yeah. So um, we need to walk in love, in forgiveness and peace because we know that our relationship with our brother, our sister, our wives, our husbands can affect the way that we relate to God. So being a peacemaker in your marriage, it's working towards peace. So if you need to work towards peace, what are some of the qualities you'll need? If you need to sort a situation in peace, what are some qualities you will need? Patience. Huh? Sorry? Love. Understanding. Uh, understanding. It needs humility. Right? To be in peace means, hey, I'm not holding on to my two horns and saying, this is the way. I am willing to let down, let go. So it needs that space of humility to accept your faults and change how things are being done. All right? Um, so when you're doing what is right, it definitely leads to peace. Right? Or doing things God's way, it will lead to peace. So suppose you are the one who has been wronged. It's easy. It's easier when you're not the one who's wronged and ask for forgiveness. But suppose you are wronged. How do you seek peace? Huh? No, if no, if you are the one who is who's been wronged, you some your spouse has done something to you. And you are the one who's been wrong. So how do you seek peace? Yes. To let it go and to forgive. To let it go and to forgive. And that brings us to the next point. To give and receive forgiveness. So how easy is forgiveness? Not easy every time. OK. So, so we generally. We are in this pattern of forgiving when it is convenient, no? Huh? Small mistake, okay, I can forgive big ones. It becomes convenient. But forgiveness is a choice. We are choosing to forgive. And yes, like we prayed earlier, in the second point, you ask for the Spirit's empowering to forgive. Right? We spoke about that, right? So. When you're forgiving, you are, it's a choice. You're saying, okay, I am going to forgive. It's something that you are telling yourself that you will let go. What does let go mean? When you forgive? Forget about it. Can you really forget it? Uh, no. Okay. Forgiving is easy, forgiveness, for, forgetting is not. Huh? Okay. So when you say forget about it, 
you it may not be possible to forget but what are you doing when you're saying letting it go you're saying yes you're not recalling it you're not recalling it and saying ah let me think about this right now what what you're saying is it's there in my memory i know what all has happened but i'm not going to sit and chew the cud do you know what chew the cud is have you seen the cow what does a cow do uh, what is he doing ah uh, so it's yeah the the cow has i think four stomachs if i'm not mistaken please don't misquote me i'm not too sure but it has more than one stomach so what does it do it brings it back and it starts to chew in it okay and that's what we do sometimes you know when we are not forgiving we bring the memory back and we're chewing on it and taking all the nutrition from it we more angry so recalling says i am not going to bring it back it's there i know i i'm hurt it's i feel it but i'm not going to bring it back to keep chewing on it that's what letting go means to not recall it's not to forget it it may not be that it's erased out of your memory right it may be there but you're choosing to let it go okay it doesn't also mean that you know that memory will completely go away or i've i've heard people say until that memory goes away i will not forgive okay you don't want that to happen or this we are becoming into dementia and all lot of problems right so it is to not to recall and what is the commandment that you and i have been given about forgiveness forgive each other as i have forgiven you as i have what is as i have forgiven so if you look into the bible the way god has forgiven is he does not remember as far as the east is from the west so far have i for, forgotten for him it's forgotten right or your sins are thrown into the depths of the sea so for god it is it's done deal no more and that's what we are forgive as i have for, as i have forgiven you so that's how we are actually called to forgive so we do the same thing in sincerity to forgive again asking the empowering of the holy spirit to do that now once you have forgiven what does it mean you know i've seen people who say i forgiven but one day one day right that is you still holding on to some grudge right you still holding on that's not true forgiveness so you not even holding a grudge so much so that you will not bring it up with someone and said you know what this my husband did to me 10 years ago this is what he did so not holding a grudge not holding any anger any ill feeling you are releasing the person from that emotion that you've hold so when you are giving forgiveness you're also doing one thing you're choosing not to repeat the mistake again right so as you forgive you're making a choice not to repeat that wrong or that mistake once again so much no about what forgiveness is yeah sorry it's learning yeah but that's what you're doing when you're forgiving right it's just not saying ha i forgive you through words but it is in your head you're not recalling in your mouth you're not bringing it back in your heart you're not holding any grudge that's what it means okay all right and the last one is once you've forgiven you are releasing a blessing you're releasing the past and you are releasing the blessing can someone read Romans chapter 12 17 to 21 If someone has done you wrong do not repay him with a wrong try to do what everyone considers to be good do everything possible on your part to live in peace with everybody never take revenge my friends but instead let god's anger do it 
for the scripture says i will take revenge i will pay back says the lord instead as the scripture says if your enemies are hungry feed them if they are thirsty give them a drink for by doing this you will make them burn with shame do not let evil defeat you instead conquer evil with good okay so when you are um doing all of this working through that conflict you are also making that choice to release the past and speaking blessing over your spouse all right so what is speaking blessing means speaking blessing also means that you are thinking blessing it does say here right in um, in verse uh, in, in verse 21 it says do not let evil defeat you instead conquer evil with good so how do you do that is first of all when you you have certain thoughts of maybe maybe some form of bitterness that's there you're casting down in 1st corinthians 10:5 it says cast down all kinds of negative imaginations bring it down uh, unto the obedience of christ so you're choosing to cast down all those thoughts and reminding yourself of how you can release a blessing so you're not even entertaining the thought that you know you you know the, okay i've forgiven and now this relationship is over you are releasing that blessing and so that you're not not in a space of bringing back any of that okay so you do all that you can to bless your spouse do that which is encouraging which is helpful which is supportive okay now uh one thing good to understand is to keep strife out of your life okay it's always good to keep strife out of your life so why what does strife do what does strife do it brings in a whole lot of evil when strife is there it brings in a whole lot of evil so in as best as possible live your life without strife and follow what god's word says and keep strife that is like i said conflict is inevitable but strife happens when the conflict goes much beyond resolving right so as best as possible keeping it out of your life okay all gone into lullaby all right okay now i'm opening it for questions you should have questions in this one so i'm open for questions sister i have uh, something to say that yes. uh, for my own experience uh, i could not forgive it on my own but i brought those people in prayer to the lord and i asked the lord to give me the strength to forgive them in his strength and then i was able to forgive and you know and treat those people who whom i had issues you know i have just uh, forgotten everything like what they did and treated them uh, like i treat everybody else you know without holding anything back and then that uh, whenever we meet those people they don't seem you don't remember that past it automatically it uh, diminishes thank you gertrude for your honesty and for sharing that yeah i uh, lovely that she's just said a testimony of what uh, forgiveness when we cannot forgive on our own it's the power of the holy spirit that really does a good cleansing of ourselves thank you gertrude one is just a comment and a personal observation um, it's like when we actually it, though forgiveness is difficult but when we actually try to forgive from ourselves it's it's really you know uh, too much like i am trying to forgive kind of a thing but once in our christian work once you realize how much god has forgiven us mm. then it becomes way too easier to forgive and let go irrelevant of the quantum of the Absolutely. hurt yeah that's, that's right thing. that's right yeah and that's uh, true another yeah. question i wanted to ask you ma'am since we were discussing about how men and women think differently and what are the ways to, uh, how they approach there are some neutral books that people get you no know, for example there was one book way what book sorry neutral not christian neutral, authors neutral. and all uh -huh. so it is just like a worldly view and thing but it helps in marriage for example there was one book some 
way uh, many years back i read men are from mars and women are John from venus Grace. so in in this christian walk of life as a counselor as a, you know uh, like an elder in church do you all actually recommend reading those thing or do you all uh, say it's better to do see especially when there are books that have research is done it's always good to understand what it is right and apply what is helpful so when when we read those kind of books we need to discern to see how much of these uh, of the, of these things are in line with with what god's also talking about so um, th these kind of researches of of brains of understanding is a good thing because it helps us to see how different people function in this case different people function and what is it so it's a good thing it's good to read uh, all those so read it with a discerning eye yes yeah because a lot of look at medical science right a lot of medical science is not happening from christian people right but you use that because it is something that helps benefit you and also we need to see that god's also given a mind of reasoning mind of knowledge to people who aren't believers so they're working with that wisdom as well and when when it comes to us we we can consume that and and use it for our for our help right any other questions anyone from the e learning i'm sorry the Uh, online students any questions okay i just want to make an announcement that um, your first assessment will be will be put on this week all right so you'll need to complete your assessment uh, this semester for the online as well as the uh, in person students it's only a objective type okay for the e learning students it's all objective Okay so please ensure that you complete it by the end of the course all right But for the online students the the date will be just a week so please ensure that you finish it in a week's time whereas for the e learning students you have time till the last day of the course all right so please complete it and what we are going to the the assessment is on all the chapters you've done until today okay so if you've listened well in class it's not going to be difficult at all okay so please make sure that you do it um and go check back your mainstream you will get the notification please ensure that you do it so it's an objective type of questions for all all of you for the e learning for the online as well as the in person students okay so please complete that assessment um before the date that it's i will i will release it tomorrow please ensure that you get that done okay All right. Any other questions? If not, we can close for the day. Sister. Yes. Most yes. of the situations have observed people telling uh, a uh, the married uh, couple to balance between the parents and the spouse. I Means just like uh, telling ha me ha milana with the wife, as well as with the parents also to balance and move on. Uh, carry uh, move on. Uh, Means in move on in their marriage life. Okay. I feel this is not the right suggestion. What they do, right, sister? Yeah. So when you say balance, uh, could you explain to me further? I'm not sure if I understood. I mean, irrespective of the situations, what they're facing, I mean, so that they avoid the conflicts and strife in the family, just say yes mm -hmm. to the wife as well as just say yes to the parents. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so there will not be any disturbances. Uh, not okay. to, not. I mean, they don't break their head. yeah so so i think it's important to live with integrity yeah, wherever we are we live with integrity that because that's what god's word says no yes and i know sometimes when we live in integrity it can cause uh difficulty with other people but uh, that is for them to bear i think it's important when we are dealing with people whether it's spouse whether it's our parents to live in integrity yeah, yeah. not leading to conflict it may lead to conflict but how you respond sometimes uh. changes things like i think for example maybe i i can give you an example of my own life is um when we've had conflicts with our parents about um maybe about how 
certain things that matters about the care for our children right they may want us to do it a certain way especially in matters of spiritual upbringing that you know there should be something done in a certain way um we've stood our ground and and uh, explain to them what we feel and what we think is right they haven't taken it well but uh, even when maybe they address it to other relatives and things like that you use the wisdom to um you know to to not really create a conflict by you know by not saying anything um and in one way yes you're you you may be honoring your parents not bringing it up in front of other relatives but uh doing it in integrity is what i think is important yes yes sir thank you rupas yeah husband and wife fight husband says to wife you don't do this thing and the wife repeated that time uh, re repeated it many times what should the husband do i think that's what rupas's question is okay so the husband says not to do something but it's it's kept repeating okay so i think you should get into um uh, more deeper conversations about why what is the issue right like for example let's say as simple as um the wife goes and shares all the conflicts with her parents the husband has said not to do it but she keeps doing that over and over again right so it's important to have a conversation to keep talking about it and and ask you know uh this hurts me this upsets me why do you do that what is the reason finding out that so it is a conversation rupas to to communicate the feelings to communicate the hurt to communicate the expectations and that's something that's very very important it's important to show grace to other people but also show also come to dealing with these matters on a, a regular constant basis so communication is key in situations like this okay all right okay shall we close um can i ask one of the online students to please pray anybody to please pray any of the Lovely. online students yes go ahead lucy loving heavenly father thank you father god for helping us to understand the institute of marriage you have designed for us oh master lord thank you for encouraging the way we need to con communicate in our marriage oh master god thank you for helping us to, helping us to learn the way we have to resolve the conflict and strife and go ahead for forgiving each other oh master lord the word which we have received from the from the child uh, from the child of god you yeah, are the faculty members of master god we thank you oh master lord for blessing us with your word oh master lord let your word be seeded in our hearts to reap the fruits of your word oh master lord thank you oh master god for your word in our lives in jesus mighty and holy name we pray amen amen thank you thank you all thanks god bless we'll meet next week please do not forget your assessment to complete it thank you god bless